liking that new intro? We made it to the weekend, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks for starting your day with us here on First Take. Coming up, we'll preview the four wild card games. And Tamir Rice's mother calls out LeBron James. We'll discuss that later in the show. Molly Karam here with you riding solo in Bristol. Your boys on the road. Skip Bayless looking clean and all black joins us from New York City. Stephen A. is in Philly. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we? Good morning. How y'all doing? Wait a second, Molly, did you suggest that today I look better than Stephen A. G.Q. Smith? Mm, I might have. I might have given you the uh -oh. nod there. Uh-oh. Please. Can we move on? Let's talk. Yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah. Love yeah. you both. Yeah. Can't wait to see you guys in Arizona. Thank you. We're going to have fun. All right, it's playoff time. Let's work and get into it. Pittsburgh has owned their AFC North rivals, winning 13 of the last 15, including the playoffs. Listen to this. In Cincinnati, A.J. McCarron has the chance to snap the Bengals' seven game playoff losing streak with a victory. Steelers, Bengals, skip. Who wins? Molly, before I answer that question, I have a question for my dear friend, Stephen A. Smith. Mr. Smith, do you realize if the team you grew up loving, your Pittsburgh Steelers, <laughs> win this game, they will tie for the most playoff wins all time? And my question is, do you know which other franchise they will tie with 34 all-time playoff wins? I have no knowledge about that, nor do I care. All I care about are the amount of you Super should. Bowl rings, which I'm sure we're yeah, number one. Yeah, in. yeah, 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 yeah. All, all I care about right now is my Dallas Cowboys still have the most playoff wins Here ever. The team you ridicule, the team you call an accident waiting to happen, the walking piece of mediocrity still has 34 all-time playoff wins, one more than your Pittsburgh Steelers. Just wanted to get that straight. Do, 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 do the Pittsburgh Steelers have more Super Bowl rings, yes or no? I don't even care. I've lost track. Yeah, I'm it, sure it's, you don't. It's, uh, I'm not sure you relevant don't. to this discussion. I'm sure yeah. you don't. Okay, Go ahead, to, Skip. Go back ahead. To the, back to the game at hand. Look, I know everywhere I go. I was in New York City yesterday afternoon, ran into three or four people on the street. Hey, Pittsburgh, that's the team, that sixth seed. You got to watch those Steelers. Here they come. Most everybody I talk to, Stephen A. says, including you, that Oh, watch this Steelers team win at Cincinnati, win at Denver, win at New England, get to the Super Bowl to play the other most dangerous team in football, your Seattle Seahawks that you picked to win the Super Bowl. I get all that. Big Ben bombs away to Antonio Brown and that unstoppable track team of Pittsburgh receivers. I get all that. I also get that the Cincinnati Bengals have lost their last seven playoff games. The last win was January of 1991, and as you bring up often, Marvin Lewis is now 0-6 in the postseason. I get all that, and despite all that, I am going with the shocking, impossible upset. I'm going with the Bengals. You know why? Because Andy Dalton, I presume, can't go. I'm going with A.J. McCarron. And you know what I'm going with, Stephen A.? I'm going with Roll Tide. I'm going with what you always tell me about Alabama. Because last night I took the time to look back at A.J. McCarron's, albeit collegiate, but Alabama resume. As you know, A.J. started as a sophomore, a junior, and a senior. And I look back at these games, two national championship games, as a sophomore against LSU. Remember, they won 21 to nothing, and the big story of the game was Nick Saban put the ball in A.J.'s hands. He goes 23 of 34 for 239 to avenge the loss in the regular season to the best defense in college football, LSU's. Then remember that BCS championship game the next year against Notre Dame, the wipeout. A.J. was really good, through for 269 and four touchdowns without an interception. I'll even throw in the kick six game that they lost at Auburn. A.J. was really good in that game, 277 and three touchdowns. A.J. was really good in that recent game. What was it, December 13th against Pittsburgh? That was the yes. Andy Dalton game. Again, 7 to nothing Pittsburgh right away. Boom, 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 as expected. And then Andy Dalton, boom, 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 led them down to first and goal at the six. We know about second and goal at the four. Ill-fated decision to throw the interception. Busted his thumb, and here comes A.J. When A.J. stepped onto the field for his first real NFL game action, as a quote-unquote starting quarterback, they're down 10 to nothing. 
and A.J. winds up throwing for 280 yards against your Steelers the rest of that game. And in, in his portion of the game, he only lost 23 to 20. Well, I think that was pretty good. So he knows he can do a little damage against that secondary, ranked 30th in the NFL in pass defense. And A.J. Green, have you checked this out, Mr. Smith? Last four games against your Pittsburgh Steelers, he has 566 receiving yards. That's 142 yards a game over the last four he's averaged. And then, of course, need I bring up, I'm pretty sure D'Angelo Williams will not play. That means Fitzgerald Toussaint or Jordan Todman. I, I don't know these guys. Fitzgerald Toussaint hasn't been very good, though he's averaged 2.3 yards a carry so far this year. And that Cincinnati defense, Stephen A., do you realize it finished only a tick behind Seattle's in points allowed? Seattle 17.3, Cincinnati's only 17.4. Well, that's pretty great. And I keep reminding you that Pittsburgh didn't exactly finish the season on a Super Bowl roll. Big Ben lost to Ryan Mallett at Baltimore. Big Ben was only leading Austin Davis at Cleveland 17 to 12 early in the fourth quarter of the season finale. So I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm going with A.J. to A.J. here. I'm going with a new look for the Bengals who don't have to worry about Andy Dalton choking in the postseason because I think the pressure's off. Pressure's off A.J., throwing to A.J. I, I'll go, I'll go 27-24 Cincinnati. Skip Bayless, I can't blame you for that because I think that when you think about Cincinnati winning this playoff game, the fact that Andy Dalton is not in the lineup and instead it's A.J. McCarron, that takes a load off of Cincinnati's shoulders because you're not thinking about Andy Dalton walking onto the field as talented as he is, you know, suffocated by a bunch of demons just suffocating him and being all over him. He doesn't have to worry about that because he's not playing. A.J. McCarron doesn't have to worry about that because he's not Andy Dalton. The only individual that has to worry about anything is Marvin Lewis, and he's cushioned himself by having Hugh Jackson as an offensive coordinator, so I think that definitely helps matters. In the last two games, first game, A.J. Green had 118 receiving yards. Uh, this last game, six receptions for 132 yards. He definitely gives it to the Steelers, whose secondary, you know for a fact, I've lamented all year long. I thought that they were not what they're supposed to be. They're a bit weak and ineffective, and obviously that's indicated by their 30th ranked pass defense. But Cincinnati isn't known to have the greatest pass defense itself. It ranks 20th in the league, and whereas the Steelers have to worry about A.J. McCarron starting his first postseason game ever, the Cincinnati Bengals have to worry about a two-time Super Bowl champion in Big Ben Roethlisberger, who, by the way, has been to three Super Bowls. So when I look at it from that perspective, I'm rolling with the Steelers. I think the Steelers are going to win this game. Clearly, Cincinnati, to me, is the more complete team. They're the better team. But I think that the Steelers could expose A.J. McCarron more than Cincinnati's defense could expose Big Ben Roethlisberger. Let's also take into account the fact that D'Angelo Williams didn't run the football that effectively against Cincinnati in the two games he played against them. I, if I remember correctly, one game, the last game, he ran for about 76 yards on 23 carries. In the previous game, it was around 71 yards. I'm not sure it was in the 70 range. There was nothing that he did that knocked your socks off. Le'Veon Bell got hurt in that first game, uh, obviously. So because of that, the Steelers have been able to remain formative by throwing the football. Heath Miller has been a huge target. In the two games he played against Cincinnati this year, he has 20 receptions 20 all right uh, uh, Antonio Brown didn't uh, knock your socks up. He had about seven receptions, about 87 yards. Martavis Bryant didn't have that big of a game. Marcus Wheaton didn't have that big of a game. But these are the playoffs here, and knowing that you don't have D'Angelo Williams to rely upon, it's going to be an aerial assault. Well, that's Cincinnati's Achilles heel. They're the number two ranked defense. They don't give up a lot of points, but they do bend a lot particularly in the passing game with the yards that they're willing to forfeit in the passing game. So I look at it from that perspective, and I definitely think it's going to be a nail-biter. It's going to be tight. It's going to come down to the wire. But in the end, if I've got to put my money on A.J. McCarron against the Steelers secondary or Big Ben Roethlisberger against the Bengals, I'm going to go with Big Ben, and I'm going to pick the Steelers to win this game 33 to 28. Wow. 
You, you don't have all that much courage of your convictions <laughs> about this game. I, I'm hearing a little queasiness about this game. Only queasiness you hear from me is the food that I ate last night because I cheated on my oh. diet a little bit and my stomach's oh. a little upset. That's about it. You know, I, I mean, Skip, I couldn't help it. I'll confess to you on national television. I lied to you all of these years. I gave you the impression I had one vice, which is crunch berries. <laughs> I actually have two. The other one is White Castle. I'm sorry. I, oh. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie oh. to you, Skip. I, I passed oh. White Castle yesterday. I just, oh. Skip, I couldn't, I, I, I hadn't had, I hadn't had my double cheeseburgers from White Castle in, in, in about two months. Uh, Skip, I couldn't help it. I just, I, I, I gave in. I gave in. How, how many? That's the question. How many? Three. Three, yeah. They're small, three double though. cheeseburgers. They're, they're almost bite size, right? <laughs> yeah, they did they, three double cheeseburgers, Skip. Three double cheeseburgers. I couldn't okay. help it. I couldn't help it, Skip. Well, every once in a while, you owe it to yourself. You, you had a tough right. show yesterday because I beat you down so badly. <laughs> you just needed a little White Castle. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys are hilarious. All right, so Skip's rolling with the two AJs and the Bengals and... Uh, Stephen A., of course, go in there with the black and yellow. How about we move on to the 